Hey everybody, welcome back to Plain Air Painting on the Coquitlam River. This time a more detailed scene, or not so much detailed, but a longer video trying to explain my process. So I hope you'll enjoy this video. Um, it's a test of sorts. If you do, hit that like button. Uh, give me some comments below. Now as we move forward, you can see the scene on the left there, and I'm just sketching it out. And this is triple speed, I think. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm just laying that foundation of what I want to see here. I'm not trying to put in a lot of detail, just the essence of what I'm painting. And you can see I start with that, that bright, well not bright rock, but that rock in the upper left. And I create the angle of the water coming down. What I liked about this scene was the zigzag um, moving between the, the rocks using the water. And there I was just laying in that one rock where the water kind of causes a lot of foam and then moving off to the left and putting in that other rock and you know the scene that you see in the bottom left is a little bit different from what I'm looking at but you will notice that I did move that lower middle rock down further to the right I didn't like its position and that's what things you have to do in plain air it won't necessarily read properly on your panel or canvas the way it is in the scene and you have to adjust it to a better composition or a better composition that you think is better and that's the key and that's more or less my sketch that I'm going to use and I'm just going to start laying in the darks I've been doing more and more of this lately and I'm really find it helps me with getting my values correct and the rest of this painting, this video is, is more or less real time it isn't sped up it's just cut um, I cut out a lot of the color mixing um, so you just see me painting and here I'm laying down the I guess it's a violet shadow I and mean, it looks really dark on the uh, white of the panel but you'll see later on that I will go in and darken it even more um, because once you get the other values in there uh, it doesn't look as dark anymore and just so you note I am mixing my colors on a white acrylic palette in this you go Pashad box made by New Wave Art that I just started using. I hope to have a review of that out in the next few weeks. I just want to get more paintings under my belt before I tell everybody my opinions on it. I'm looking at getting the shadows in there even below the rocks and then I move right into the water and what I'm doing is I'm kind of looking somewhere else and then I look back at the water and the first color that comes to mind that I think I see that is the color that I put down in the water as if you watch my other videos more recent videos this is a technique I've been using to find and understand color a little bit better and it helps quite a bit because if you stare at one area for too long it just becomes uh, gray and you lose that sense of initial wonder in that color that was there so glancing in and out again I find really brings that sense in and so that's now I'm working on sort of a dirty sienna color, I guess. And that's more or less what I see in that water. And it reflects what's underneath the surface. So there must be some, some sun getting through uh, and shining on the bottom of the river, riverbed. And this is kind of what I see. And this will generally somewhat change as I move throughout the painting. And you can really see even in the photo on that last little bit area on the left there where I put in that stroke by the rocks you can see kind of the rusty tones in there and I'm just working and then I come back one thing I do a lot is jump around in a painting I find it it helps quite a bit and there I was just softening everything and here I jump down mix another color and it's more or less a, the dark violet that I'm seeing within the deep shadows of the water outside of the turbulence and I put in a dark value just from experience that I know it needs to be darker than I need it to be to get a sense of depth or not need to be than what I think it is um, but that's where squinting comes in right if you were to squint right now you can see this the foam in the water compared to the value next to it uh, that value is quite dark and so that's why I put that in that dark right? I'm trying to keep it soft though and kind of random I know there's a pattern to water and I'm trying to follow shapes but at the same time, I don't want those shapes to be, uh, to create a pattern, an even space pattern. And I'm just trying to fill in an area there. Trying to, right now, my whole goal is to get rid of the white. 
And so I moved on to the, a darker green tone that I could see coming over the little waterfall there and into the top area as well. And it looks a little bit different in the reference photo, which was anticipated because that was taken at a different time and it, it is a photo. You don't necessarily see the moving light on it. And I bring that green down uh, as well because I can see it in the, in the lower left. And I'm just trying to get that back shore, but then I come back into the water again. I'm trying to get that. That was more or less a reminder of myself that the water is going down from right to left in that area. And now I work on the background, just kind of laying in some a mass of green tone. And I, I believe I do try to vary it. So it's warmer on one side and cooler on the other. Or it gets a little bit of uh, lighter on one side than it is another. And just keeping it random, keeping the brush strokes really loose. I don't want to really create a sense of a solid color. Especially for a background with a lot of trees and you want a sense of just random depth. And you can get that by just laying in uh, brush strokes that overlap each other. And I want to get a little bit of light on that undercut I guess and this is a little bit light you will see me darken it up a little bit later and I at this point it was light on the left but then I darken it and cool it as I went to the other two patches of light there as well so as you can see that's quite a bit darker and quite a bit cooler right because I want to force your eye not force your eye but guide your eye I guess to that one rock on the upper left and you can see what it does it helps mute those banks into the painting and make them less important and so you have no choice but to come over to that rock and the middle rock i put in and it's quite vibrant in the end you will see the intent was to have the design push you to that upper rock but because of the high chroma color that i'm putting in right now on that metal rock the middle rock tends to stand out so after it dries thoroughly what I'll probably do is adjust it so that middle rock doesn't stand out as much and here I'm using a rosemary master choice long flat brush just to blend everything together I don't want a sense of hard edges right now in the water I just want everything really soft and so this is the brush I use to create a little bit of, uh, lose all the edges in here without mixing the two or all the paints together I find it a really good brush you can use any soft hair brush for this this is just one that I had in my kit all right now I'm just creating some uh, random squiggles as well as a reminder that's where the turbulent water is but then I soften it up again soften that area and I'm just working my way through the water here Trying to get a sense of like, that's how the water flows idea, right? Comes around that rock and down. And I'm just creating a sort of a, I don't want to call it muscle memory for this painting, but it's, it's creating an action memory for myself that I won't forget to put in, because it is important. And I move into the rock, and I, I start with a nice violet color for the shadow area. I will darken this a little bit later, um, but I thought it was a good base. That's what I saw. I saw violet. And I, and I wanted it dark, but I didn't want it too dark either, right? So once I get all the white covered, I'll make my adjustments after that. And I'm putting on the uh, greeny moss that I see on the rock. And then, uh, oh, still working on the greeny moss. That I see throughout here, bringing it through into the bank again. I sort of saw some moss growing down over there. Right, keeping those edges soft, put a stroke in to get the main color on, and then soften the edges. I usually try to keep everything as soft as I can for as long as I can, and this helps me keep away from putting in too much detail right away. Now I'm getting into the more of the tan color of that rock, but I uh, cooled it down quite a bit there. You know, it's catching a little bit of the sky. Uh, I don't want to go into the light tan just too quickly, um, because... Um, I want to lay the base down first. Sort of build the rocks up, right? It's kind of a process I've worked into. And that top edge is a little bit cooler than the lower part of that rock. And I put another little line in there. 
and I decided to put in a little bit of the trees in the background now to create more context for myself so I don't just have a you know a, a green mass up there I'm gonna put in a little bit of variety in the sense of uh, sense of depth and where I'm putting the trees and, I, uh, and I'm consciously putting these trees in not so much as where they might be on the bank uh, rather than where they fall in relation to a ship to the rocks right and how I want them to, to be portrayed in the end it's just gonna be there for context if you do it right if you do it wrong it's gonna like a, look like a series of trees put in line like a bunch of soldiers um, so when people aren't paying attention in my opinion when people aren't paying attention to the background um, you're successful I'm just looking for a random pal uh, random pattern here I decided to darken the left hand side and cool it so now there's a distinct grid gradation from dark cool to uh, warmer lighter you also have a hue shift but I don't really find that's important it's uh, more value and temperature I find is more important when I paint putting in some trees again looking at us trying to gather a sense of depth a little bit of scratching you know I have uh, I have the ends of my um, paint brushes sharpened and I use those as scratch into the uh, paint on my on my panel you, know, you can see a little woodpecker came visit us on the top left there I've never seen a woodpecker come that close it's quite interesting for me anyway moving into a little path in the background uh, behind the trees um, but it's something I forgot to put in so I'm putting it in now and then I'll come back over with the trees to give a sense of depth I thought it was important to give us something where the user could go into and imagine themselves walking along the river's edge kind of idea now I'm gonna start putting in uh, some more of the some more of the smaller rocks uh, light blue value just putting them in as I kind of see them there it's more of a, a flat plane of rocks um, but it's still a uh, a bunch of rocks in themselves and I just got to get a sense of clustering I guess more than anything a rock straggler on the, on, the, on the right and then one in the center and I'm using a light blue kick value for this because it's kind of neutral and rocks tend to reflect the sky I'll go in with a letter 10 value later as you'll see to put on the highlights and give them more of a sense of being rock like and some of them I might actually put some moss on them as well and this uh, rock off the side of the, the main rock that I want I'm just uh, throwing in in a muted violet gray I guess I will darken it quite a bit I believe later on and I'm putting on the highlight right now sort of giving two values to that rock so it has a sense of top and side um, but it isn't too detailed that it's going to take away from that one triangular rock and now I put in some some tan values in within those rocks notice that that tan color is the same value as the uh, light blue value that I had right it doesn't really give a sense of highlight on the rocks it just gives a sense of depth on the rock and and a little bit of sparkle and this is a fantastic technique to do when you want to create interest, right? Put a warm and a cool together, but them being the same values. Working on that one rock that's uh, creating a separation or where the water spills over. Putting on the, on the shadow side. Just building it up. I have to put the base in here first before I can put all the fantastic water on top. With all, of, all the base of what I'm doing, what you do with the water is just going to be lost. You, you need to build it up. And here I go in with a little darker violet now. I had to adjust that value. It was just too light in comparison. I'm trying to keep those edges soft as well. And also random because rocks are rather jaggedy. So I didn't want a, a perfectly smooth value there. And then putting dabs of values as shadows on those rocks. That rock pile back there. And you know I'm looking for certain areas that I put the values in and other times I just put a little dot to create a sense of randomness there, there is a a pattern but it's a pattern of randomness and I find that's one of the key things to make a painting interesting is to keep everything a little bit random I'm trying to 
darken up that right hand side a little bit. You know, I'm just trying to get a sense of the water movement with the brush that I have. And that one really wasn't working very well. So I will move into a, a different type of brush. And it's a, a silicone tipped round more or less. And it really helps take away paint from your canvas. Especially if you're working in oil. And I'll show you this in a, little, in a while, a while here. But in the meantime, I'm just working, trying to understand the flow of the water before I start putting in my in the, uh, the lights. You can see how that brush does take off paint to give a sense of, uh, of highlight where I want it. It's the uh, initial steps, I guess you can say, of building up the water to create a sense of moving water, rapids. All times, just trying to keep my, my brush a little bit... Uh, not my brush, but my hand moving in random movements. I mean, this is, this is water. Um, I want to get the flow in there, but I also want it not to be predictable. And that's just my style of painting. It's more uh, impressionistic, I guess, in a sense. So I tend to find erratic movement works better. Erratic, but controlled, I guess. Trying to find the wave pattern in there with the uh, the moving water and moving up at the top keeps it's quite simple. So this is the rubber tip silicone brush that I use, and you'll see how wonderfully it just moves the paint off to the side. It doesn't stick to the silicone; it just kind of moves it off the side and exposes the um, gesso underneath. And this is why I love working on white. Um, it just you can take off paint so easily it leaves the essence of what's there um and it, but especially with silicone it leaves a hard edge to give you a really good direction where to go right so think of this as a sketch in my painting that i'm going to be using to put on the rapids of the water and the beauty of this is if any of it gets left it's just going to look part of the random water now i'm moving to the greens i see a bit of green coming in there in the water so I'll try to establish a little bit more variation within the color of the water. Because the water does change any every time you look at it, right? There's going to be some blues here, some violets here, some greens there, all depending on the environment. This time I'm moving the brush in the direction of which, which is the water is moving. I'm trying to darken a little bit because it is quite dark. It got a little bit too light on me. So I'm using the guide of my paint removal. To add my darker values now on that semi where the water falls off onto another plane. And now putting some rocks down below, trying to fill the rest of the white in. And you can see right now when you look at this piece, you think, oh, what a tragic mess. Um, but you have to know that every painting has an ugly stage. The most interesting is the sketch. Everything after that is pretty much terrible until you finally. Uh, create your vision which is the final painting um, so always and I always do this I always try to look at my painting as as pieces I'm working on a piece and I'm working on a piece here I'm working on a piece here and working on a piece there and eventually all those pieces join together and then when you can step back then you can start seeing a painting then you can judge the painting for what it is and start guiding it into the finished direction you need it to be so there I was putting in some values of dark on the rocks and I'm bringing those values into the water again as well. You can see that that water is quite dark where it's uh, transitioning into the into the foam. And I start uh, start taking away my marks that I created with that silicone rubber tip brush. Right, just because you put it down doesn't mean it has to stay. And that goes for any brush stroke, right? Just because you think it was right at the time doesn't mean it's right five minutes later. So I'm really trying to darken up that whole top surface. Trying to get that value down. And I'm trying to bring some darks. You can see in that the, the two areas of rapids there, there's a little dark area in between. That's what I'm trying to establish there. Because once you start putting on your lights, you don't really have much time to put in your darks again. You get, you get a lot of potentially chalkiness going on when you start mixing darks in the light. So always try to mix your darks or put your darks down first. Uh, in instances you will see me after I put on highlights go back in with 
concerned effort of strokes with dark paint um, and that helps lay down the dark um, but if you start fiddle faddling like this with darks when you have your lights on it's just going to turn into a, a muddy mess so I'm trying to make sure that I have as much as my base as I as I can down first here just trying to soften up some of those silicone area brushed away areas trying to just soften trends or the edges of where various colors meet you know, trying to trying to keep it very homogeneous I guess is the word back and forth notice I haven't touched the uh, the far left of the water scribbling that I did on the rock in the middle um, I will a little bit later I believe now I'm back get back into the trees again I need to establish sort of um, the values of the trees back there so I come in with a light blue um, and I will come in later and go for a little dark and now I'm scratching uh, the brushes and grashes into the paint themselves with the back of the brush like I said I actually put my back of my brush through a pencil sharpener and so I now have this this back end that I can scratch with and I come in trying to get in some some darks of those trees not too dark right because they're in the distance you can't bring in like a full nine value of, of darkness it has to be um, either scumbled in or the value adjusted so you can get a sense of um, depth and variation in there. And here I am putting in some of the branches, not so much branches, but the, the fronds, I guess, of the uh, of the cedar trees, of the fir trees that are coming down. I'm trying to get those the green values in. And I, and I start at mid-value. You don't want to go late right away because you need to build it up. And so I was just bringing in, trying to bring in the randomness of those um, fronds. And you can see that rock left to the big rock that I want to main as the main um, highlight of the painting. I start really darkening that rock up quite a bit because that rock in itself isn't important. It's just creating a transition to that triangular rock. And once I put water in, you'll see that rock will stand a little bit more. So putting a cool value on, on the top, going back into the uh, the land mass underneath the hangover there, darkening it up quite a bit. And you can see that starts to help pull your eye towards that one rock. And I'll even start darkening it on the left hand side. Um, I found that that mass was taking away from the rock itself, so I had to adjust it. And I felt that stroke really did it because I got another peak on that rock, which gave another sense of um, craigliness, I guess you could say. Because this rock itself is quite a bit um, jagged. So establishing the shadows in there, just kind of wiping off some paint to get a really reflected light. Or I might have gone in there with a little bit of a rust color. Now I start the beautiful run of water. And you can see this is about a 4 or 5 value, but it was a, it's a white and also green blue probably with a little bit of uh, transparent red in it to um, gray it out. And I'm just starting to bring this in as a sense of, a sense of the water. And it's a dull enough, not dull enough, but it's a lower enough value that it starts to read as water but it's not overwhelming as water and that's what you need to do with moving water I find is you have to bring it up slowly you can't just throw in your highlights and have a wonderful time you gotta build up your lights as well just as much as you gotta build up your dark so think of this as the shadow of the water right so all those ripples of the water are reflecting the sky um, and this is what you see and on the, on the left of that middle rock I added it and so anywhere I see moving water I'll pretty much add this value of blue there as an initial indication of where I think the water is moving and after that I'll build it up again with a lighter value it could be could be a lighter blue it could be a lighter uh, say a breeding green and white, and white mixed together um, and eventually a white and a yellow to create the highlights right so now I'm creating the sort of the, the water that's around the rocks Trying to swoosh it up to give it a sense of movement as well. A light brush strokes. This area that I was just working on changes quite a bit. Um, so just because you put it down doesn't mean it can't change. Right? Trying to get a sense of movement within that water. Coming down right. below, trying to get that that feeling of the water skipping over those rocks there. You can't see this below the surface. A little bit smaller brush this time, moving up, trying to get the blues 
a little bit flatter lines, right? Because it's a little bit stiller water. It's not as rough as the uh, lower water. I'm trying to create a sense of, of uh, diagonal, creating diagonal lines within the painting. I'm trying to find out how that water moves. A little bit of highlight on the rock. Doing some tests, and then I finally then lay down my value. So those three specs that you see me do before, those were just mixing tests. They weren't meant to be there as a final. Uh, final stroke and so I'll mix I'll test I'll mix I'll test and I'll mix until I get the test right and then I'll paint there's no point adding paint if it's the wrong value right you're just gonna have to fix it later so you, 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 you do a concerned effort to get it right the first time and if you have to create a more uh, another concerned effort to get it right a second time then that's what you got to do but at that point in time make an effort to get it right and most of the time it'll turn out sometimes you can adjust it for the sake of the painting right so building up those lights, I'm going back to that, a triangular rock, and quite a bit of uh, glare on that painting. The sun's starting to come through some trees. Just trying to find the shape of that rock, because it's important. That, that shape of that rock is important. It doesn't have to be exactly to what I see, but it has to be represented a jagged rock, right? And so now I'm putting some blue in that I see in that area. So I'm using some vertical strokes, and I'm going back into the rocks, back and forth. Rocks, water, rocks, water. But I find if you spend too long in one specific area, um, you get you get lost, right? You you start looking in that one area, and you can't really tell what color it is anymore. You don't really know what to do. So that's why I move on to a different area. Put that nice highlight on that rock, and now moving back into the. The upper rocks but using a thicker paint and there i gotta move my tripod just because the glare was too bad so it wasn't it was bad for the camera but it was even bad for me moving back into the upper left trying to put in some um, uh, highlights on those fronds that you see coming off those cedar and fir trees not trying to paint them exactly or every single branch on there just trying to get that random pattern and that's what I like to paint. I'm more of an impressionist kind of painter. And the impression was these things were coming down over top. And it gives a sense of depth and, and wonderment. You kind of understand what they are. Um, but you don't need to know, you know, exactly how many fronds are on that one branch, etc. It's just more of a, the essence. So coming in with a light violet color around that rock. Using that same light value on the in the upper area. Trying to just finesse the water a little bit um, so not only do I put down a value of blue but I put down a, a value of violet and that looks like blue right now more than anything we'll see where this goes I'm coming back with that blue again and I, and I also found you know like strokes like that and then dashes and dots that really helps and I'm moving back into the ground pulling up there putting some some green in to get it a sense of some light hitting it and here I was just trying to capture the moss on that rock. So I'm putting another layer on that rock and I didn't like it so I came back and I added a little bit of highlight back. Bring it in there and the highlights are generally pretty cool but I might warm them up I think a bit later. I lay the cool down first and the warm down after and that helps create a sense of sparkle, depth, interest. And bringing in some darks in that back area there I really need to lay that back. And those darks I found really help push that into the distance a little bit more. Uh, bringing the left side a little bit darker. Coming down into the water with some darks. Trying to establish those pockets that you can't see through really. Looks like it came in with a tan color so that might have been a rock. That obviously was a rock to me now. A rock on the left and a little bit lighter highlight there. It was a cool highlight. Let's see where that takes us. And now, see, this is more of a viridian green and white. And viridian green is quite cool, but when you place it on a blue, it looks warm. Um, and this is why I love temperature so much. It, it's different every time you do it, all depending on what you put it next to. So this was giving a variety to the shadow of the moving water. Right, so we put down the, the lighter blue, but you put the viridian on top of it. It looks like it's being lit in the shadows. But of course, it just gives it a little more interest. This will never compete with the light glinting sparkles that you'll see in the water, but it gives a sense of depth to the shadow side of the water. Right, so just building it up.
Nice juicy strokes, keeping the paint. The paint's starting to get a little bit thicker. The more and more I work on the water, the thicker and thicker it gets. By the end, the paint's pretty thick, and it's one stroke at a time, reload with paint. One stroke at a time, reload with paint. Dibble dabble here and there. So a little bit of flicking up, trying to get a sense of movement within that water. And coming in the background again, adding, moving those that that bank a little bit darker. Trying to establish it. Let it sit down a little bit, a little bit better in the background. You know, you start off with a plan at the beginning, and it, and it shifts throughout. So I'm not painting for the scene. I'm painting for the painting at this point. I'm using the scene as a reference, but you know, I keep on darkening that that back shoal area and that was for the sake of the painting not necessarily what I kept on seeing so laying in some more darks in between the blue values that I have um, and in some instances it creates kind of a um, a soft edge between which is nice and here I'm working on now the lights of the uh, the water and this is more of a white with um, transparent orange in it so it's more of a you know three two value it might be it's just one step lighter than the blue itself but because of its warm it really stands out a lot it's not necessarily standing out because of the value it's standing out because it's uh, a warmer temperature so i'm just trying to get the randomness you know i'm doing dots and dashes um this is what moving water does it, it it's a funny thing um in a photo on the left in the bottom left it looks like it's a blurry mass but when you're actually experiencing it experiencing it you can see the flashes of, uh, of light and brilliance here and there and so this is what I'm pretty much doing I'm following my my blue pattern and I'm bringing in the lights on top right and I'm doing some dots and dashes to give you a sense of um, where the water is sparkling more or less right and this is why I love plein air painting because those sparkles are changing every time you look at the water whereas if you just had a photo you know that sparkle is going to be there so you'll probably paint it there you won't really tend to get a sense of of movement you'll get a sense of what the photo took um, and that's it's totally different things um, with plein air painting everything's always moving always shifting I mean that light that I just put down there that might have just lasted for three or four seconds and then it disappeared again um, but it's just something that y you see and you put down and it helps the painting immensely so coming in with a uh, I think that's still the same white and orange value yeah a little bit darker orange but but still it's the orange or this could be a yellow it's hard to tell but again I'm coming in with a little bit different value a little bit different temperature and you could argue a different hue if it's more yellow than the orange, um, but that's not important to me really. It's more the uh, it's a it's a different temperature. And doing some dots, some dashes, getting a sense of uh, sparkling light. How it comes in, how it flows, uh, and then coming in with a little bit of a lighter, lighter paint. This is probably like a light violet, a really light blue. So it's building up to the to the um to the rapids of the, the water but it's not the highlights of the rapids it's the shadows of the highlights so before it was a shadow of the midtones of the water and uh highlights of the midtones and i'll bring in the um highlights of the or the shadow of the highlights and then the brights of the highlights so it's every every piece has a step right and this is i think white and viridian again so the viridian comes back into the highlights of the sparkling on the water moving into the rock see there I put the um, the warm stroke on the cool strokes that I had so they they really start to juxtapose each other and now that warm stroke stands out a little bit more they're not different that much different in value but because the highlight is warmer it really stands out and I decided to use that same value moving into the water as well not for the sake of some Instructors, some artists will say, well, if you use one value, one color, one somewhere in the painting, you got to bring it somewhere else. Uh, I don't think that's true at all. Um, I just used it because it ended up being the right value and the right temperature that I was looking for, and I used it somewhere else. I don't intentionally try to use another, the color I use somewhere, somewhere else in the painting. I think that's a ridiculous thing to do. 
and moving into more viridian you can see with the with the white with probably a little more viridian in there you can start to, i can see the color a little bit more in there and you can see those strokes that i just put down on that water where i'm painting around the rock and it really creates a sense of depth right the blue is a little more deeper down the viridians on top of that and now these yellow strokes on top yellow and white strokes on top are more of the highlights right so in that one area of water you have three different depths and that's what's what starts creating the water there isn't more of it there you don't can't put down water and then put on high light highlights on the outside of it to make it look like it's water you, there's so many layers involved and here i'm putting a little bit of viridian on top of that that rock because i found that that water was traveling on top of that rock and i wanted to get that feeling i will adjust this a little bit later it's a little bit too green um, but i want to get that feeling of that transparent water traveling over top of that rock and I'm moving in with my darks, but you can see when I'm doing a dark, I lay it in and I move on to somewhere else. I don't start mixing it into the lights that I already put on. Uh, that's kind of a no-no. I try to put in a stroke, put in a stroke, put in a stroke, and then you can see that last stroke got a little bit muddy. Now I'm moving back into the, uh, the grasses. Got to take a break from the water. I move back into the back trees, start adding some light glistening in between the trees. Just get a little sense of variety in there. Like, like the sun is dancing. Right, moving in there, you can sort of see now that it looks like the sun's coming through the trees or it's traveling through the trees and onto the back area there. Right, just another another layer, sense of depth, a sense of variety more than anything. I keep on working on it. I think I go a little bit lighter still. Yeah, there we go, a little bit lighter, the more yellow in various areas. Really starting to brighten it up. Now that creates a little bit more sense of depth on there. And then I start doing the um, the flyaway trees, as I like to call them, and they're just essence of twigs and branches that are thinner than the main trees themselves. But it creates a sense of volume back there, and it really helps soften edges as well, which um, takes a harshness away from it. So I'm just dancing with my my rigger brush. A rigger brush is more or less just a really long, thin, round brush. Um, it's more of a watercolor brush, but I, I really love it for oil painting, especially when it comes to grasses and distant trees. I believe it's got its name for drawing riggers on the old boats that you see with a, a lot of masts and a lot of ropes that travel in between them. So I'm trying to get a variety of highlights within those trees as well because they aren't just a lower tone. Some of them have some sun on them. Yeah. Coming in and out of the bank. Now I go to a, a dark value uh, using that same brush. Uh, laying it in on that area in the behind. It's a little more flat than when I'm laying it in. Um, I just want a sense of uh, a depth more or less right within that water. Now I'm bringing it into this area as well. But a little more random right because that's where the running water is so i just try to lay it in and, and, and uh, plop it in more than anything put a stroke down refill the brush come back up put some down refill it never trying to really oh, mix yeah. it in with the uh, the lights because i know i'm just going to end up with chalk anyway and it'll take away from the freshness so you remember how dark those were when i just had the white panel now i have to go in and make them a little darker and so you need to make a decision and you execute it and you move on until you have to make, make the next decision and I'm bringing those darks down below a little bit I think in between just dabs and dots I mean not only does the the, the the light on the water dance and glisten but so do the darks right so they go in random patterns as well and there's dots and dits and dashes moving back into the back plane again and getting some putting in some random Marks more or less to create a sense of uh, grasses and depth back there, right? More trying to tell a, not tell a story, but trying to put things in there to show that there's more there than there actually is. Because in the end, it's just context. It isn't necessarily being rendered for grasses. It's being rendered there as a reference that this is a, uh, a shoal on a river. Uh, I like doing this in water, especially when there's a lot of blues involved. I start uh, mixing a little bit of red and white to create a beautiful pink. 
and then put that within the water and it creates a, another level of um, of interest within the water it's just another value value and temperature shift more of a temperature shift right um, you could argue it's a value sh or a, a, a hue shift but I, I classify it more as a temperature shift it's it's warm but it's not as warm as the yellows it's warmer than the blues um, it's warmer than the greens but the greens are warmer than the blues but cooler than the reds and the yellow so it's, it's just a dance of values right and doing a lot, a lot of dots a lot of dashes just giving a sense of water sparkliness uh, move back into a little bit bigger brush try to hit it with a little bit of darker viridian blue back there trying to get that water to, to sit down a little bit better on that rock and you can see that middle rock is really standing out because of the initial transparent red oxide that I put down and so this is why I think I'm going to go back after this is dried and um, glaze over top to try to kill some of that, that rich deep color and then try to go up to the triangular rock and bring some vibrant color into it to transition the focal point. You start off with a plan, you, you know, you, you make a mistake, you learn from it, you correct it, and then next painting after that, you won't have the same mistake, right? Now if my intent was to make that the highlight of the, the painting, I, I, I you know, might have succeeded. So bringing a lighter uh, green value on top of that last green on top of the rock is uh, the water has, even though it's moving in a sh as a sheet across the rock, it still has essence of being a, a sparkle. Now I'm looking to decide where to bring these lighter greens that are reflecting into the water. Right, and it's it's very deliberate. I'm deciding to put down a stroke, and I put down a stroke. I'm not trying to be wishy-washy with where everything's going and um, mixing in. And you can see this is a, a warmer value of that green. And now it, it gives that sense of variety in that spot. And it's a little bit more interesting. And now I'm bringing those greens into the water below. Notice that I put down a stroke and I leave it. I'm not trying to mix it. I'm not trying to blend it. It's being put down and it's being laid down and it's staying down. Put a highlight onto the rocks now. I will go back and adjust that. I start bringing the highlights down on lower rocks as well. But that's quite thick paint now. And I'm starting to lay it into the rocks and lay it into the water. So I put down the stroke on that violet stroke. It's a little bit more green so it stands out. And it, it creates another sense of variety and depth. Now I'm starting to get into the... I think I'm going to get into the, the highlight of the waters. So I'm trying to just bring that area to life there. This is the, all the highlights are really going to happen around where the calmer water flowing down meets the, the second layer of water and it creates all the turbulence. If I did this everywhere, it's going to just dis, distract from where I'm trying to get the focal point, which is from middle rock up to the, the, the smaller rock on the right where the water's flowing around, and then hopefully eventually over to the jagged rock on the top left hand side. And so now I'm laying down an even lighter value of the various branches and fronds that, that the various trees have. So it's creating another sense of depth, right? So now there's three values of those fronds right there just to create a sense of depth in that area. And they were, I thought, you know, when you first put them, when I put down the first strokes on those, they look kind of light. But compared to these, they weren't that light at all. So it's all about planning your values. Controlling values with color, I thought, was one of the most difficult things that I think I had to learn. And when it clicks, it clicks. And it's all I can really say about it. It's just a lot of practice, a lot of painting. So now I'm pretty much done. I end up signing my painting. And we'll see if I uh, rework it in any way. I have a tendency to sign my painting, take a break, come back, and start reworking it. So we'll see if this, if I did or not, or if I just decided to um, leave it for another date. Oh, here we go. I decided to rework a little bit and throw in some lights on the letter blues within that highlight area. I'm trying to bring out that water a little bit more. Yeah, now it's starting to come to life. So even though I signed the painting, I decided to come back and I didn't I didn't find the sparkle enough. So I'm trying to go in with my lightest lights. Notice that it's not white. It's really a lot of white with a little bit of blue pigment in it. Just trying to get a sense of sparkle and I'm I'm, I'm flashing up those different areas to get a sense of movement within that water. I'm really starting to to make it splash. Really need that splash in there. Just 
building up lightly, gently, making a decision to put down the brush and flick it up. Here I didn't think this rock was dark enough, so you'll see I'll, you know, I'll darken the rock and water be damned. I'll go over it, but that's okay because right, right there, because I can come in with the, the water again and come up again. So favorite stroke was that one right there. That gave me a sense of the water flowing over and uh, it, it creating a sense of movement over that rock. And it's pretty much the best stroke, I think, in the entire painting. And coming in and finishing off the water around it, giving a sense of movement. I keep on working it out. Get a little bit, a few diagonal strokes there. And uh, some strokes on the upper left, or upper right, sorry, to give a sense of water. And there's the details. You can see how thick that paint is. If you like this video, subscribe, hit that like button, share it with your friends. And if you want, please ask your questions below. Catch me at michaelking.ca on Instagram.